in two different ways is because um, in the case of uh, RabbitMQ works well, it doesn't mean that um, all your OpenStack RPCs and notification is working fine. So that uh, we start uh, monitoring um, RPC calls and notification from OpenStack side also. Um, yeah, so below is um, some of the reason that uh, may cause RPC reply timeout. So um, first one is maybe the message is lost in RabbitMQ or the message is uh, delayed in the RabbitMQ cluster, which uh, is um, the fault for RabbitMQ. But um, you can see for if an RPC server has an ex exception or it took a very long time to process message, uh, it will also cause um, reply timeouts at uh, a client side. And the latter two is basically not uh, RabbitMQ's issues. So um, this is uh, also the reason that uh, we try to uh, monitor our RPC calls from uh, two different ways. Yeah, so from our monitoring RabbitMQ, uh, we use a um, RabbitMQ exporter. Uh, we're not using the official one, but another open source one on GitHub, but uh, there is also an official RabbitMQ exporter that you can use. And the main metrics that uh, we are looking into are some of the message processing status that's uh, things like a number of queues and number of queued messages and number of connections uh, to the RabbitMQ. And also some uh, node uh, specific uh, metrics such as the file descriptor usage, uh, the memory status, partition status, and um, if the RabbitMQ node is up or uh, running or not. Yeah, so um, these are the metrics that we're currently monitoring. And uh, we have also set up uh, alarms for the metrics. So like um, if uh, the memory usage is high, it will trigger alerts. Or if there is too many message stack up in RabbitMQ, it will also trigger alarms. So we can take a look of uh, reason. Yeah, so... Um, Next is um, how we monitor from um, the also messaging side for RPC calls. So uh, we have proposed a, libra a library called also metrics uh, currently working on an upstream. Uh, so it's uh, basically a Prometheus metric server that will export uh, all the RPC um, RPC metrics from um, also messaging. So uh, currently we're um, monitoring these uh, metrics. Um, so the metrics are identical from server and client side. So basically um, how many RPC call is start and end and how much time it takes to process those RPC calls or and um, how many exceptions it happens for um, all the RPC calls. So um, some of these are um, useful when debugging or uh, trying to find out uh, where the bottleneck is. And uh, we're cur I'm currently working hard in my free time to uh, try to make it upstream. So uh, here's a kind of a quick look at off the dashboard we have. So uh, basically we can see uh, which uh, RPC call is um, being done most, um, we have label for um, all the RPC calls, so we we can easily determine uh, like uh, as you can see in the graph, like uh, there's a lot of Nova RPC calls about uh, updating objects or such. And for um, processing RPC time, uh, we can also uh, get to look at uh, how much time it takes to process certain RPC calls. Like uh, in this case, uh, we can see that uh, Nova take a lot of time to schedule an instance to find a, a place to schedule an instance. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, currently what we monitor for uh, 
for RabbitMQ and RPC calls under OpenStack. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's all I would like to share today. And here are some reference. There are some uh, talks we made before um, in Open Infra Summits. Um, that's, uh, I also use those data in this slides. And they have, uh, some of the talks have more details on um, why we set up um, RabbitMQ in this and what's issue with it before. So if you have time, uh, you can take a, take a look of the video recordings of these talks. Yeah, uh, so any questions? Thank you a lot, Jin. It was really interesting to see how you, how you run it and to see the Oslo metrics graphs at the end, to see the other side of, of the work you've been, you've been pushing in, uh, in Oslo recently. Um, so let's open up for questions and more general discussion on scaling up private MQ clusters. We can start with a question from Edelberg on the chat. Uh, do you want to directly ask the question or do you want me to just raise it? So I'll do it. Um, hints regarding the threshold to start splitting RabbitMQ clusters per service. So is there like a, how do you identify the moment when you need to split RabbitMQ clusters per service versus uh, a single RabbitMQ cluster? Yeah, so uh, as far as I know, uh, we, we, scaled, uh, uh, we separate our uh, RabbitMQ clusters uh, or um, scale it out when um, the memory usage is high or, or the CPU usage is high. So uh, that's um, kind of, usually the memory is um, the one that we look at. Does anyone else has other hints that uh, they would give to you, like the threshold to start splitting RabbitMQ clusters? This is meant to be an open discussion, so I don't want it to be too too much Q and A. Don't hesitate to uh, unmute yourself and and join. On our side, we mostly monitor the CPU usage, and it's based on that usually uh, that we take the decision to either scale or change the hardware. So CPU usage on the RabbitMQ host. Yeah, yeah. So I can give our example as well. Um, so in our case, we, we monitor all these metrics, but we made the decision to split the right MQs per OpenStack service. So meaning that for Neutron, we have a right MQ for Cinder, we have a, a, rabbit, a completely independent right MQ. And, and this is exactly the same for every service. So this means that the failure domain in our case will be per service and, no, and not per RabbitMQ uh, service. So Dmitry, you're, you were also saying that it depends whether you want to have HAQs or not. So the general rule of thumb would be that the HAQ is, uh, if you do HAQs, you need to to split earlier, I guess. Uh, we, we can't hear you, Dimitri. This is not working for Dimitri. Yeah, the mic seems having <laughs> some Malfunction. It, it sounds like a cat now. It's so cute. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I guess you hear me now, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I meant that with HAQs, you kind of uh, duplicate all messages in uh, three. So you will hit the limits way earlier. But without them, uh, it might be harder to. Uh, to fail over uh, because eventually some uh, queues might be missing on other ones and uh, well 
for prior rabbit MQ versions like three eight or three seven something like this uh, it wasn't failover in good and you might finish in stark rabbit overall okay that's a good segue to the next question from nikita karpin around which version of rabbit mq uh you're using at line and and if you have any any suggestions on best rabbit mq versions to to pick i know that they're like recent improvements in RabbitMQ that you might want to upgrade for. So is there any- Yeah, we're currently running 3.6.5. I think it's fairly old. And I think there's a lot of fixes uh, and after 3.8. I think uh, it's better to upgrade it uh, at least to 3.8 point something. Uh, but I haven't looked into it yet, and we ha also have a plan to upgrade it. Uh -oh. Anyone else on RabbitMQ versions? Yeah, at OVH, we used 3.5 or 6. I don't remember which one in the past, but we recently upgraded to 3.8.4 or 5, if I remember correctly. And we noticed a really Im good improvement. We took also this um, uh, upgrade. Uh, during this upgrade, we also updated the rapid policies. So uh, it's not only because we upgraded that we have a better performance. But anyway, uh, I confirm that the newest version are better than 3.6. And in a particular thing that we had in the past, a bug was um, very annoying, uh, at least for our clusters. It was something related to the fact that some queues um, were not binded to uh, correct exchange. The binding was deleted or still present in um, when you list the binding, but not working anymore. And the result was um, messages were not routed correctly to the correct queues. And we had no way to monitor that. And uh, I found out somewhere, somewhere I don't remember exactly where, that it may be related to the fact to a bug in 3.6 version. So that's the main uh, issue that make us upgrade it to 3.8. And uh, I must say that it's uh, far better now. Okay, so 3.6 at line, but uh, 3.8 is solving a number of bugs that might um, yeah. justify the upgrade. And uh, I have a question, but maybe you want to finish before the question, which are on, on uh, chat. Yeah, I'll go through the chat questions first. Um, so have you tried scaling RapidMQ data nodes? Like instead of three, what if you increased to five? Uh, I, we haven't tried it yet uh, because um, the CPU and memory usage uh, looks good right now. So uh, we haven't tried it yet. And a um, question from Seong Su Cho on the version of Oslo messaging needed to use Oslo metrics. Yeah, uh, I'm, good currently question. On, <laughs> I'm currently working on a patch of string and uh, kind of need some works to uh, get it done, yeah. Yeah, so currently Oslo metrics is, is released, but it requires a patch to Oslo messaging that has not uh, been merged yet. So if you wanna, maybe uh, Gene can, can post the link uh, to the patch in progress in the chat so that uh, people that want to, to have a look at it or maybe try it out on their Oslo messaging setup can. But it's not it's not in Oslo messaging yet. Next question would be from Benjamin Furman. Uh, what hardware do you have for the RabbitMQ nodes? Are each cluster on dedicated nodes? Yeah. So. Um... All the clusters are on dedicated physical nodes. And uh, let me just check the spec. I think uh, we have 100 uh, 
and 28 gig of RAM and 40 cores for each node. So we're using a very large physical nodes for every data node. Is it the same for the management nodes as well? Or is it yeah. specific? Yeah. I okay. think it's the same. Yeah. Okay, so you have five big uh, servers. Yes. OK. Tell me and maybe you... some overkill. Tell me why are you running those on VMs or physical machines? So we run those on virtual machines. And each cluster uh, for Neutron, because we only have a cluster for Neutron, has three nodes. I'm checking the specs. I think it's 64 gigs that we have, or 32 for each node. Sorry. OK, anyone else wants to chime in with their shiny server specs? <laughs> It's bigger than what I have at home, just saying. So yeah, let me finish. So we have um, the, the nodes running on virtual machines and they have 64 gigs, these virtual machines. Okay, then next question. Um, what about what do you use to deploy these multiple RabbitMQ clusters, and do you collocate them with other services? So we, you don't collocate them with other services. You said they were dedicated nodes, but what are yeah. you using to deploy them? Are you using some uh, deployment framework that is also deploying OpenStack, or is it is it like completely separate? Yeah, uh, we wrote our own Ansible scripts to deploy our OpenStack and RabbitMQ clusters. Yeah, so uh, it's basically in-house, but uh, for the RabbitMQ Ansible script, uh, it doesn't do much. It's basically just uh, install RabbitMQ servers and uh, get the settings updated. Oops. The sharing, I'm not sure why the sharing is not. No, it's fine. It's just... Yeah, OK so that we can see your face. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, anyone else with, with like uh, advice on how to deploy those RabbitMQ clusters, toolkits that they are using? On our own side in Ubisoft, uh, uh, we're using uh, Colon Symbol to deploy uh, a RabbitMQ with all the different stuff. I can give our examples as well. So at CERN, we are using Puppet basically for to configure all the OpenStack infrastructure. And we use the upstream Puppet modules uh, basically for, for everything, also for RabbitMQ. Yes, at OVH, uh, it's pretty much the same. We use Puppet as well. Okay, uh, next question around um, from Brin Zhang on, do you have some suggestion according to different nodes? For example, is there a need, is there a need, how many RabbitMQ nodes are needed? Maybe like Brin can chime in if, if I misinterpreted the question. So Jin, you were saying you were running clusters with two management nodes and three data nodes, right? Yeah. Um, I think how many nodes uh, to run basically, uh, yeah, as we answered before, uh, we usually look at the CPU and memory usage for uh, for the RabbitMQ nodes. And uh, for um, other parts that um, if you find out there is uh, lots of queued messages that says uh, not, uh, not acknowledged in uh, your RabbitMQ nodes. Uh, you may have to take a look at um, the workers uh, or the consumers for those queues. So um, if like um, there are lots of uh, queued message in your Nova queues, you may have to take a look, look at your Nova conductor and maybe increase the worker of them.
Okay, I got to the bottom of the questions in the chat. So I don't know you had another question. Yes, I was uh, wondering how do you how OpenStack uh, Nova Compute, for example, is connecting to the cluster? Is it by adding specific cluster, all three nodes IP in Nova.conf, or are you using some kind of HA proxy in the middle or stuff like that? Uh, we have a low hardware low bandwidth in in front of uh, three uh, data nodes. Okay. Yep. So Nova talks to this load balancer, and then it's balancing across the three data data nodes, right? Yep. What are you doing at OVH? <laughs> we are putting um, uh, the three nodes IP in Nova.conf for now, but it's not perfect. And um, I'm wondering if uh, an HA proxy or some hardware load balancer in the middle could maybe help, uh, for example, when we need to uh, do an action on, on one of the node cluster, because for now it's not very easy. We have to patch the configuration of Nova each time we need to for example, replace one of the node. It's not very easy. How do you do that on sound side? Uh, so exactly the same way you are doing it. Okay. Uh, so we have the old way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The nodes in NovaConf. Okay. Any other question on right MQ scaling? Yes, um, you said you have 3,000 computes in your region. Is it only on one region or? Uh, two, um, the largest region is uh, two, more than 2,000 compute nodes. Okay, so that's still quite big. Okay. I and... also have a question. Um, uh, this is re related with RabbitMQ, but also with architecture slide that you show, that show up with the, the different services that you are running. So you said that uh, you have Rabbit, uh, a RabbitMQ cluster for services like Keystone. Um, so I, I guess that is more for notifications. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat it again? So the, the connection that you have uh, between Keystone and RabbitMQ or, or Glance and RabbitMQ is only for the notifications. Uh, for what, sorry? No, uh, for the notifications of the these services. Oh, uh, yeah. Yep. Right? Yep. Um, so how, how are you then extracting these different notifications from RabbitMQ? Because it looks like everyone is doing something different and uh, different tools to do this. Um, I'm not familiar with this part. So, uh, okay. yeah, sorry. Oh, the question is not directly for you. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know. I'm Maureen. I mean, general notifications, so might be even the meter take, yes, right. So you need them for, I don't know, for telemetry or something like this. So you can just kind of use new new driver for notifications themselves, right? Uh, I'm not sure if I understood what you said. I think there are still some. I mean, the, 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 there are notifications and the, there are RPC queues and uh, kind of notifications are required mostly for telemetry, right? So uh, you can just. Well, all of them are interesting. So what we are doing, we are extracting all of them from um, from RabbitMQ and we are storing everything on Elasticsearch uh, because it's interesting to see uh, what happened to to, to a resource in, in OpenStack. Um, but everyone is doing a different thing with them. 
And then uh, what, what got my uh, got me curious is that Genie also showing that slide uh, K native for functions as a service and uh, to have functions as a service working properly. It's great if it's integrated, uh, the notification system is integrated with Knative or whatever tool for functions as a service uh, that you are using. Uh, do you know how, how this is set up, uh, Genie? Uh, I think it's, those are running on top are of our Kubernetes cluster. So uh, I think not uh, kind of separated from uh, our infrastructure as a service layer. Oh, okay. Yeah, and okay. it's handled by another team. Okay. So it's just a different component that you run on the Kubernetes clusters for users, but yep. it's not integrated at all with this notification system. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay, do we do we have another question on scaling RabbitMQ clusters or all the questions have been answered? No, I still have one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Um, you, you had a slide about your policy, uh, HA stuff, but you are not setting anything about miss HTTL and QTTL. Uh, you, do you have something related to that or you, you just keep the default? I think we have some changes for it, uh, but I haven't dig it out yet. <laughs> It's maybe a global question as well. If if anyone has a a good recommendation about that, because I'm pretty sure we are not doing it correctly. In the meantime, I can explain what we do. On our side, we have um, we set uh, QTTL to one day and miss HTTL to twelve hours. For me, it's it's a lot it's more much more than what openstack expects because if i'm correct most of the openstack timeouts are about minutes 10 minutes or five minutes or stuff like that well i was trying to check um uh... What are our values? Uh, but it's much less than that, uh, definitely. It's so it's about minutes. minutes, okay? Yeah, I think it's five minutes if I'm not wrong. Five minutes for both TTA of uh, queues and messages. Yes. Okay. It makes sense actually because uh, if we take Nova as an example or Neutron, the agent is always expecting to have an answer between this uh, rabbit. Uh, messaging timeout uh, configuration, which is by default, I think, 300 seconds. So. Yeah. Anyone else on the TTLs settings? That would be a perfect uh, thing to fill the wiki page about uh, RabbitMQ configurations that we, we created in the large scale meeting. Yes, it's definitely one one question we should add. Can you like write it down somewhere so that we don't forget to do that? Yeah, I will do that. Um, so we have other questions on the chat. Pierre is asking um, the fact that you use three data nodes and two management nodes for each RabbitMQ cluster. Does it mean you need fifteen RabbitMQ hosts per region, like five for Nova, five for Neutron? five for other services? Yeah, currently we're running at 15 per region. Uh, at least for the largest region, we have 15 nodes. Uh, I haven't checked. Uh, I think it's identical for all the regions in production. And uh, how, how many hypervisors is that managing on in the largest regions? The largest one is more than 2,000. OK, thank you. 
Edelberg had like a question on the tuning of RPC calls time window, but it feels like it's it's been answered. I feel. Uh, did you did you have any other um, question around that, Edelberg? No, uh, no, thank you. That's all. Thanks. Um, so another question from Bryn Zhang. Um, and how many nodes in a region, or well, that's what we discussed, 15 nodes, and how much pressure on the Oslo messaging? Um, how much do you, how much nodes in a region do you, do you have tested? So it's probably like uh, 2,000 nodes, the, the question you just answered, yes. And finally, a question from Mark Heckman. Uh, what about the TCP backlog size in a rabbit? That would speak for us. We did some change about that at OVH. I'm pretty sure, but I don't remember the numbers. Um, maybe I can extract that uh, later and um, write that down on on the wiki as well. But we did some tuning on the TCP side for sure. I like how we ask a question and everyone is like typing firstly to see if they can access the configuration. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see who wins. Between Jean and Belmiro, they're all looking. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely work on, on documenting that on the wiki. And I guess it's a good um, it's a good uh, moment to explain what we do at the so I think I won. Go ahead. Um, so I put in the chat um, a talk that we gave, I gave with Ricardo a few years ago uh, in one of the Open Stack summits. And the talk is about our networking, but um, most of the slides is describing our experience with the RabbitMQ cluster for Neutron and the configuration that we have there. Uh, so just looking into those slides, the TCP backlog that we have configured, uh, it's um, 4,096. But this, goes through, this goes through how we, uh, when we were adding nodes and migrating nodes from Nova Network to Neutron and growing the, the, the number of hypervisors on Neutron, uh, shows all the issues that we had with the, the RabbitMQ cluster. Today is a little bit different because we split our infrastructure in different regions, uh, basically to to avoid most of these issues. Um, but the configuration uh, behind is exactly the same; just the size of the cluster changed changed a little bit. Okay, while people think about other questions, I'll just plug a bit of an advertisement for the large scale SIG. Um, so to, I already explained at the start of the meeting, but uh, what the large scale SIG does is working to facilitate running OpenStack at large scale. So uh, mostly around answering questions that operators have as they need to uh, scale up and scale out their OpenStack deployments, but also uh, help address limitations that operators encounter in large OpenStack clusters. So um, to do that, we, we work on uh, documenting this journey from um, the start of your OpenStack deployment to scaling out to multiple regions or uh, multiple cells. And um, we also work on, um, like Jean said, we also work on um, specific additions to OpenStack that help uh, manage those the, the, that scaling journey. So Oslo Metrics is a good example. It's slow moving because we're not a lot of us working on it. But if you're interested, it's definitely a good a good place for operators of uh, OpenStack deployments to uh, get involved with 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 the project. And to give you a quick view of um, the 
product of the large scale SIG. We have this wiki page here uh, that describes the scaling journey. And basically it goes from configuring the, the, the deployment for preparing for scale, monitoring the addition of uh, load on your, on your cluster to detect the strain and the limits, then scaling up uh, to a certain point at which point you have to scale out because you can't really, um, you hit limitations in terms of scaling up a single cluster. So for example, if you look at scaling out, we answer questions like uh, when, uh, what are different options? Uh, what are the advantages of regions versus cells? Which was the, the topic of our last video meeting. Um, and obviously all the, all the questions didn't have answers yet, but the goal is to try to answer them uh, when we can so that people that go through that journey of scaling up their OpenStack deployments are not alone asking questions that everyone else has already been, been through. So the goal is to put that knowledge out because a lot of people have uh, gone through that journey and have scaled uh, their OpenStack deployments to massive uh, scale. But um, for a lot of people, they are at the start of this journey and it's very uh, intimidating. And uh, knowing that that path was traveled before and that we have some answers is really helping. And do we have new questions before we close? Jean is saying is they did not modify the TCP backlog option, but it could be a good one to look into. Anyone else has questions? Well, if not, uh, we'll close early. Thank you all for, uh, for joining us today. And uh, next, in two weeks, we'll have a more traditional IRC meeting for the large scale SIG. Uh, to discuss like uh, further improvements to those wiki pages, but also uh, topics we could discuss in future editions of this video meeting. I feel like it was well attended again and uh, very informative. So we'll definitely continue to, to run those in the future. Um, thank you all and uh, have a great rest of uh, Wednesday. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you. you. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Thank you, bye-bye.